Let's raise some big questions. What does Ram mean for a new India? Will the mandir end up dividing or uniting? Was the Bhumi Poojan at the end of the day a Sarkari function and not a universal function? Some of the questions that we'll raise today. I spoke earlier to the BJP Rajya Sabha MP and party ideologue Swapan Das Gupta. Listen in to him on this question. And joining me now is the BJP's Rajya Sabha MP and a party ideologue, Dr. Swapan Das Gupta joins me. Appreciate your joining us, uh, Dr. Das Gupta. Let me start by asking you what this day means for you, because you were someone who, uh, when the Ram Janmabhoomi agitation was taking place, described it as the political Hindu awakening. How do you see it today? What would you call today when the Bhumi Poojan took place? Well, it's a... It's, it's a day of utmost significance but it's a day of utmost significance for two different reasons one that a momentous victory the first step of a momentous victory i would call it a total victory i mean i would call it the culmination will be when the temple itself is inaugurated but it is a momentous victory insofar as that it has been achieved so far through purely constitutional and relatively peaceful means. I think you will admit that from 1992 onwards, or 1993 onwards, the whole movement has followed a very, very different trajectory from the one which, was, which we witnessed between 89 and 93, where it was militant, it was aggressive, and there were incidents of violence which took place. And there was, certainly there was a great deal of Hindu assertiveness. I think after that, there was a strategic... But how do you, how do you distinguish the two? Sorry to intervene. How do, you, uh, how do you distinguish the two? Because that movement from 89 to 93 led to a demolition of a, ma a mosque. It sparked up bloody rioting, divided communities. And today a majority BJP government is in power when the uh, temple is being built. Yes, it is, a, it, it is a majority BJP government which is in power. And I think what happened, that assertiveness between 89 and 93 was partly responsible for creating that awakening. But what was not needed was to demolish an existing constitutional order. So I think what, what, was, what took place was one, a show of strength, if you might call it, call it, which actually impressed upon a large section of the establishment plus a large section of the Hindu community that these are, these are the lacuna in our existing secular setup and they needed to be filled up. But that they can be filled up within the existing order by really a change of direction in the politics of the country. And I think that's really what, what happened. And that's why I, I would be very careful. I, I mean, I, I would in, insist that we divide the movement into two very, very separate phases. So it, it's interesting the way you're putting it. You are, in a way, acknowledging that what happened on December 6, 1992 shouldn't have happened. It was a criminal act. But that what's happened subsequently, you're claiming, has moved through the constitutional process. Uh, and I repeat my question, is it as easy as you make it out to be to divide the two? Because uh, let's be honest, the same uh, movement that led to the demolition also led to the BJP eventually coming to power. You cannot divorce the two, can you? The term criminal act is your coinage. And let, let's be very clear about that. It's not something which came out of the lips. It was Supreme perhaps, Court coinage, uh, Dr. Das. They, they may have called it, but you, but it's something which I haven't said. What I have said, what I would say, is that okay. perhaps the demolition of 1992 December was not planned, but I can. It, it was almost inescapable under the circumstances, because in the manner in which an entire political system, an entire establishment had ganged up to prevent 
the articulation and acknowledgement of a groundswell of Hindu sentiment, it led to that. Had some of those sentiments been acknowledged and certain steps been taken to redress that, uh -huh. it is entirely possible that the course of temple building in, 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 in the Ram temple building in Ayodhya may take a slightly different route. What I'm saying is that the denial of the legitimacy of the movement mm -hmm. by a very large section led to the sense of provocation and therefore over aggressiveness which manifested itself despite the attempts by the leaders on December 6, 1992. And I think after December 6, you saw so two things. One, a sense of awakening of the Hindus, but at the same time, it was definitely a period marked by intense violence and the Bombay riots were the most uh, visible example of that. But uh, so there was a time to where, where you have to say, you have to, you know, cry halt to a process which could lead to unchecked violence all over India. You know, today the Prime Minister, Dr. Dasgupta, said the Ram Temple will become a symbol of our devotion, our national sentiment. This temple will also symbolize the power of collective resolution of crores of people. It will keep inspiring future generations. How do you see, what is the Prime Minister really suggesting? That the Ram Temple itself is a symbol uh, of the aspirations of power? Because there are those, for example, like uh, uh, Pratap Bhanu Mehta, who will turn around and say that this is the first example, as he's called it, of the real colonization of Hinduism by a political power. How do you see, the, is it a symbol of devotion or a symbol of power? I think it's a symbol of collective aspiration. It's a symbol of a lot of things. One, the Prime Minister also mentioned the continuity between the struggle for independence, which happened, which, which culminated in 1947, and this marking another phase of that, the continuity, which is that pol while political power devolved to Indians, I think the creation of a self-confident citizenry, and I would say the Hindus are very important in terms of de defining what is India, have really today, in some senses through the Ay Ayodhya movement, but not entirely, a lot of it needs to be done, regain that confidence whereby this series of defeats which marked the collective history of the Hindus for a very, very long time, mm -hmm. for a thousand years, was in some ways checked and arrested. And for the first time, you could say that the Hindus say, look, we have been able to do justice to the inheritance, our inheritance, and start once again, you know, with a mood of renewed self-confidence. And the Prime Minister's speech was more or less... But, but how would you then respond? Line. He was talking about the future. He was yes. talking about an aspect of Ram, which was not about war, which was not about recrimination, mm -hmm. which was about how to build a kingdom. In a, I mean, kingdom in the Ram con context. He was therefore quoted very well from the Ram Charitmanas to say that there are aspects of governance, there are aspects of modernity, mm -hmm. there are aspects which can be epitomized in this temple. And that's only a symbol, but it's a very, very important symbol. And you understand the importance of symbolism in the life of a nation. But, you know, the, the, there will be those who will maintain that the spiritual, philosophical aspects of Hinduism have lost out to the temporal a uh, aspect. This is a political symbol. That at the end of the day, this tim uh, this temple becomes a symbol of political triumph. Jai Shri Ram uh, is more a political slogan than a religious or spiritual one. It's not Ram as Mariyada Purushottam as sacrificing as as looking at the higher values of life, but Ram asserting his himself in some kind of a dominant way. Uh, uh, how do, uh, you know more much more macho. Uh, martial symbol of Ram. How do you respond to that? I think there are two different aspects. You know, there is an aspect of Hinduism which is really all about the spiritual, the metaphysical aspects and the very... And that was very personal in a lot of ways. I mean, one of the features about one of the reasons why the Hindus as a collective often lost out 
was that they kept their feelings to themselves as personal entities. I think this was one of the first attempts after a long time. Shivaji may have tried it at one time. The Marathas and the Peshwas may have tried it in a limited way. But after a very long time, to get the Hindus to act in a sense of collective. So you're right in so far as saying that there is an element of politics involved in it. There is a political. But, and that, the point of other, what you call the spiritual and the metaphysical, the higher realms of life, have always been there. Unfortunately, they've also been trampled and kicked underfoot, and the, the loss of political power has also meant, in a long way, in, in a large sort of way, the loss of the inheritance, the loss of the richness of your civilization. So unless you control the environment, you're not going to get that richness coming about. So it's it's also remember that I mean it's but, it's it's great to say look we are lost. when you talk of it, so, sorry to interrupt when you talk of Hindu as per, sorry to interrupt Dr Das Gupta when you but when you talk of Hindu aspirations uh, Dr Das Gupta you know there are multiple uh, uh, traditions in Hinduism that's what sets. Uh, Hinduism apart from the proselytizing uh, religions, you know, uh, Hinduism doesn't have its Mecca, it doesn't have its Kaaba, it doesn't have its Vatican, you know, it is, it is a, uh, it, it has Vaishnavite traditions, Shaivite traditions, will that all now be consummated in this one temple, which has suddenly become the symbol of aspirations? I mean, no. is it, I, I come back to it, is, is that really possible? Is that it's trying in some way to make Hinduism a mimic of other religions? Hinduism to firstly, to call it Hinduism, as you well know, is a bit of an oversimplification. And there is no such thing. There are a large number of what might loosely be called Hindu faiths, Hindu traditions, and the multiplicity of those two traditions are well recognized. And the religious dimensions of those multiplicity, I mean, my, my uh, inheritance and my religious tradition is entirely non-vegetarian, which might be very different from yours, uh, uh, mm. although I suspect not so much. Uh, but the issue today, as the Prime Minister called it, was that it's a temple of modern India. It's a temple of modern India. So it, it sort of symbolizes both the secular, the national, as well as an element of the religious. And as you know, well, you, and you, know, you witnessed the Ram movement in its full glory. And you saw that there were different currents mm -hmm. altogether which were involved in it. There was obviously a very deeply devotional element to, to that. There was also a political element to that. And there was also, naturally, as happens in all these cases, a very assertive political power alone and, you know, muscle flexing element to it. So these are all there. And the different traditions, like, for instance, take into account the contribution of a very large number of people from Tamil Nadu in the attempts in the post-93, 94 uh, uh, mm -hmm turn of the movement in getting it done. If you look, look at the 92 Karseva, you'll see the large participation of people from Andhra in, in, in that. The initial impetus to the movement came a lot from Uttar but, Pradesh. But and you know, what? So you can see that various strands of what might loosely be called the Hindu order has yes. been brought in. Because it, it was not merely a question of devotion to Ram. To some people, Ram is a god. To some people, he's a Maryada mm -hmm. Purushottam. And to some people, he is a secular symbol. And I think all three are there. He's a symbol of kingship. So it's it's uh, it brings in all of them. I, and I don't I, think I, there's an idea of occupation of Hinduism. Is know, a let me ask you, though, in Sure. You know, but, but the fact is, and this is my final question here, is that at the end of the day, when, when the prime minister says this temple is a more is uh, you know is a symbol of modern india modern india should be built on values values of justice the fact is those responsible for the demolition have not been prosecuted it should be built on values of compassion uh, where you reach out to minority groups instead we have growing divisions between communities that it, the notion of ram rajya which mahatma gandhi spoke out was based on values Today, it doesn't seem to be based on values. It seems to be a triumphant moment, as I said, of political assertion. I think you, you may not have listened to the Prime Minister's speech in its entirety. When he spoke about the temple uh, being a symbol of modern India, he also spoke about Ram, Ram Rajya, and he elaborated on the particular values 
which he believed epitomizes Ram, the kingship of Ram. There is an element of Ram which is all about kingship. And those were spelt out in great detail. And strangely enough, Rajdeep, you'll find that they contained almost all the suggestions. I have a feeling that really the objection which people have is the fact that the Supreme Court gave a verdict in favor of creating a temple. And that, I mean, you, you, you can talk about the Constitution. No, I have the objection that the Supreme and Court created the temple. That's the, the Supreme Court's right. But the, those no, 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 responsible I, I for demolishing the mosque have not been prosecuted. I think had that I happened, about, you could have actually have, today then claimed that, yes, you prosecuted those responsible for demolishing the mosque and therefore can claim that we are now setting up on a new chart or a new path. Well, you can prosecute them. I mean, sure, people in Chauri Chaura were also guilty of breaking the two traditions of nonviolence, which Mahatma Gandhi advocated, and that was part of the struggle. But I would say that the demolition on 6th December played a monumental role in actually furthering this. And today what we've done is, and I hope whenever it materializes the actual temple, it will complement. There is the constitution on one hand, there is the temple on the other hand. Maybe other symbols will also come in. But I think they will be complementing each other in different mm -hmm. ways in defining this India. And India, which was not born, you see, some of the mistakes which the so-called constitutionalists make is that by talking about India, which was born only on uh, 26 January 1950, there is a much older India. There is an India which seeps in, which incorporates the tradition, incorporates the values, incorporates the collective memory of the past. And I think this Ram Temple, together with the Constitution, will actually help bridge some of that schism, emotional schism between modernity yeah. and tradition, which has been happening in this country. And I believe, therefore, and maybe, I, I, and I hope I'm right, it, that it will create... In a sense, the constitutional... Rig in, in a sense, therefore, the... Con in a sense, therefore, the constitutional republic, according to you, will be replaced by a new republic then? No, I think it will be enriched by this sense. It will be enriched. The term replacement does not come in. It's enriched. There is another India, an older India, which okay. also has to be embraced and taken into your, the cosmopolitan view of modernity has often excluded that sense of Indian inheritance. And I think this marks a stage of including that in the larger project of what, it, what constitutes modern India. In, in, and, and I presume it means that in that uh, vision, every Indian is an equal citizen. I Without presume, question. therefore, that it will Absolutely. not be seen as a if symbol of, in a way, marginalizing the minorities. Every Indian is an equal, in, uh, is an equal citizen and that our secularism is not irrelig irreligiousness. It, our secularism means that every faith has a right of worship. But there is something called nationhood, which is different from how the state is. And that nationhood incorporates elements of our culture, which predates the constitution and which has to be incorporated. And the Ram Temple in, is basically a symbol of some of those impulses. Let's leave it there. Therefore, Dr. Das Gupta, you've given us your sense of what this day means. Thank you so much for joining me here on the news today. Hello, everyone. This is Rahul Kamal here. Hope you enjoyed this video. For the latest news and analysis, like and subscribe the India Today YouTube channel. And don't forget to press the bell icon to stay updated.